Well, hey everyone, if you've been following my channel for a while, you've watched me build a lot of stuff. My most recent project is this workshop here with the little greenhouse running along the side. There's a lot of people building cabins nowadays with little to no experience. I know that because my inbox is always full of building questions. So I want to put this video together for you all. I'm not going to do it in a Q&A format, but I want to share some information that will hopefully guide you through your decision making with some very important parts of the project. It's tough when you put your hard earned money and time into something only to find out later on that you wish you had done something differently. So let's try to avoid that. I'm going to pull up a chair and let's get started. The biggest mistake that I see people making in the early stage of the project is they're building too close to the ground. I can totally understand wanting to go simple and cheap, but the cost required to pick that building up to say 30 inches or 36 inches off of the ground is minimal. And the benefits to having that building up off of the ground will outweigh the cost by far. You never know what the future holds. You might have to get underneath your building to make a change in your insulation. You might have an idea that you didn't have before. You want to run an extra wire or run some piping. To get under a building that's a foot off of the ground is a royal pain in the butt. It's difficult to get anything done beneath your cabin. Now just recently I showed you where I was under my camp here. I have an aluminum truck box buried in the ground. I use it for food storage. If I go down under there on my hands and knees or squat down, I have room to work. If I want to do any changes under the cabin, I can do it piece of cake. But because it's up off the ground, I have storage space. I have tires stored under there, aluminum ladders, some staging. I got firewood under there. I got a lot of stuff stored under the camp. So just a few extra bucks to pick that building up off the ground. I have all of this usable storage beneath the cabin. So if you're going to build, take that into consideration. Your ideas right now might be for just a little simple building to get out of the cold when you go hunting. You might want to just put it on cement blocks. Think further ahead because you never know what the future holds. And if you're too close to the ground, it's really going to hamper you with any of your new ideas that you have further down the road. Okay, so we're up off of the ground. We're framing our floor system. What are we going to sheathe the floor with? If you're thinking OSB, then you're thinking cheap. And remember, with a building project, you spend cheap, you're going to get cheap. All right? There's two places I don't want to skimp. That's my roof and my floor. The best stuff that I have ever used is at Vantec. Three quarter inch Advantec tongue and groove, it is fantastic. If you're building on piers, you're going to want something that's going to be able to handle the moisture by being near the ground. Advantec has never failed me. It's pricey, but it is worth the money. Most of you know that when I frame my floor structure before I put down the subfloor, that I insulate my floor with a bubble foil. I'm going to leave links in the description below to what I do with the bubble foil. But I put the bubble foil down and my subfloor down on a nice dry day. I snap all of my lines for my wall framing on the Advantech. Then I cover it, the whole deck, with clear plastic. And then I build. When the project is all dried in, I take a razor knife around the perimeter on the inside and I take the plastic away. If any water ever gets trapped between the subfloor and the foil, it will not drain through the foil. It will become trapped there. So take the extra steps to make sure the water does not get into your floor system if you use the foil in this manner. But if it does get trapped under there, water gets under my plastic, gets trapped, it's not a problem. Not a problem whatsoever. 
Just get under your building, take a razor knife, slit the foil lengthwise in between your floor joists, let it hang down, let the water out of it. When everything is dried out, staple it back up, tape the seam, You'll, you will be as good as new. So if you're going to put the foil down first, make sure you do a good job of covering your deck. Alrighty, we have our subfloor down. We want to get our walls up. What are we going to sheathe the exterior walls with? Most people use OSB. I've used it a million times. We all know that it's garbage, but why do we choose the OSB board? because it's cheap, right? It saves us money at this point in time in the project. So that's why we use it. I just want to explore another sheathing option here. Let's look a little bit further into the project. All right, let's analyze the situation. By using the OSB, it might not be saving us as much money as we think. I sheathe this building with 5.8 T111. Why did I choose to do that? Well, first off, it's a superior product. There's no comparison in the strength of the wall sheathed with 5.8 T111 as compared to a wall sheathed with OSB board. But the main reason why I chose the T111 is by sheathing it with the T111, I can eliminate all the other steps that come down the line by using the OSB. We all know that the OSB board can't handle the weather. As soon as you stand your walls up, you have to get the building covered with either tar paper or a Tyvek type house wrap. There's money and time invested in that. If a lot of time goes by without getting siding on it, the building is an eyesore. And if you don't get siding on it at some point in time, it's not long before that Tyvek's blowing around in the wind. You know what I'm talking about. Then further down the line, I have more money and more time invested in siding and installing the siding. By using the T111, I eliminate all of those steps. Not only do I have a much stronger wall, but when I sheathe the wall, stand it up, the exterior of my building is finished. I got instant gratification. All I have to do is put some oil stain on it at some point in time. The exterior is done. Cost me more money in the installation, four times as much per sheet, but it saved me time and money in the future. Now there are cheaper types of T111, this thinner stuff around 3 8 I believe, and there's some other brands of products which is very similar to T111. I have never used those products, so I can't recommend them. I use the higher quality 5 8 T111. I think it has a really nice look for a cabin type of thing like I have here. It's not for everyone, but for those of you who just want to get a building up, have it nice and strong, have it look pretty decent, the T111 might want to be an option you want to explore. Because like I said, instant gratification is a wonderful thing. I want to take a moment and talk about storage space and heat retention. Two very important things for your cabin to have. Your roof and ceiling design will often determine how much of it your cabin offers you. As important as it is, those two factors are often overlooked during the building process. I built my first cabin when I was 18 years old. And at the time, I thought it would look really good to put a cathedral ceiling in the building. So that's what I built. And it did look good. You entered the cabin, you could see all the way up to the ridge pole. But I gotta tell you folks, <laughs> with the wood stove going, it was often unbearable up in the loft. And at the same time, it was often uncomfortable to sit on the couch downstairs because it was kind of chilly. It seems the higher the heat has to rise, the more of a vacuum it creates, and it just sucks cold air out of every nook and cranny. After living there for a couple of years, I extended that loft over all the way to the other gable. 
put in a little staircase in the corner and what an improvement that was. Not only did I have better heat retention and better equalization of the temperature throughout the cabin, having that extra floor space upstairs offered me more living space and more storage as well. So ever since then, I have avoided the temptation of putting in cathedral ceilings, and it's always worked out in my favor. As I'll tell you folks, it's much better to be glad you have the storage space than wish you had. <laughs> I'm telling you, and I'm telling you from experience. <laughs>
This video is to help you make the right choices with your building project. If you found this to be useful information, please subscribe because there's going to be more coming in the future. And if you know someone who's building, share this video with them. Might be a little tidbit or two that can help them make the right choices as well. So all the best to you all, and God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss.